Good morning. How is everybody? I was standing here this time. I, I think I'm getting this stuff figured out. Um, it's always so confusing though because I've got one, two, three, four monitors in here. And I was watching the one I was supposed to be watching. And then I looked over at the 20 second delay. So I might have been just standing here looking dumb. I don't know. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, but hey, it's all good. Uh, welcome to Monday Methods. I'm Bradley McAllister, founder of Spirecraft, and we're going teeny tiny miniature today. And you know what I did forget? Now that I say that, I forgot my little sample piece that's in the pictures. Uh, let's see who's already in here. Arthur Miller's in here. Good morning, Art. Ozzy, good morning. Uh, hey, your stuff's going out to you today, Oz. Great. Uh, Frank's in here. Dan West, good morning, Dan. Hope everybody's doing well. I, uh, I'm looking forward to this. I, I've got things set up for going small. Like I say, I'm kicking myself in the head now because I didn't bring the little teeny piece. But you've seen the picture. Uh, you get it. It's, you know, they're a little bit taller or bigger than a quarter. Or at least that one was. Um, what I have set up here, I believe this is a piece of ash from out on the road. And what I would like to try and do today, uh, if I give myself enough time or move fast enough, I would like to try... Try and make one of these little mini goblets uh, with a captive ring, both in wood, uh, like you see here, and out of resin. I got a box of resin scraps that uh, a local wood guy brought me, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's any good. I don't know if it's polyester, if it's urethane, if it's epoxy. Don't know. But um, we might throw some of that on at the end. But I'll make a wooden one first, and... And my dad's here, Mary Alice and Doug Dixon. Good morning. Hey, Doug, you'll be so proud of me. Look at, the, look at your chuck. I cleaned this chuck up this morning. I took my four-aught steel wool to it, and I got all the paint off it and everything. And I said, you know, the boys at Easywood Tools will be so happy that Bradley cleaned up his chuck. Because uh, for those of you who don't know Doug Dixon, who just popped in on Facebook, Doug Dixon is the sales manager for Easywood Tools. And he likes to drop by and make sure I'm doing it right. And it's good to see you, Doug. Um, uh, so uh, what I was saying is I've got the cameras dialed in today pretty close. So that, because this is going to be a small piece, so you, that gives you an idea, there's my fingernail. And yes, I did trim my fingernails, for what it's worth. Uh, that's our overhead shot for today. And here is our end shot. It looks at it from the end, and it looks like I need to adjust that camera over to one side just a little teeny bit as well. And while I'm doing that, the other thing that I'll put up on the screen... Um, but we've always got to have a little bit of way to make a living around here. Uh oh, compressor's on. Got it. Um, Spirecraft is having, you know, uh, Black Friday, and I'm calling it the Beat Black Friday sale. Uh, and we have the Easywood tools, all the turning tools and the accessories on sale for 15% off. And I've got a graphic up on a web page, and I'm going to show you that right there. I had it on earlier. Uh, we've got our Easywood tools going. Uh, today I'll get the graphic up for the Chromacraft products. Uh, they're all on sale. Uh, this is a page on the website that if you go to spirecraft.com, and I'm going to try and drive the computer from out here, if I can do this, and see if I can go back one page. It's on the events page. And this is the hardest thing in the world to do, is to get this to go back when you're trying to see it. Um, and maybe if I'm lucky and I don't screw it up and I get over here to the back arrow, I just want to show you how to find it on the, on the Spirocraft page, on the Spirocraft main page. If I click on that, did I get it right? No, it didn't quite get it. Trying to drive from remote is a little tricky. Ah, it won't, it won't do what I want. If you go to spirecraft.com and go to events, let me, oh, there's what I can do. Get up to, the, when you first come into Spirecraft, I'll, I'll learn this re remote driving yet. Uh, on the events page is the link. This is a, a crazy little uh, trackball remote that's in my hand. Just so you know what I'm trying to work with, it's a crazy little thing like this. Um, kind of fun in its own way. But click on the Black Friday sale right here. Just click right here under events, and that will take you to the page. And I've quit driving everything. I've got a variety of things listed in here. I keep clicking too much. And 
if we can't get it to track ball down. And there's the, the star bond. We put some bundles together for super glue for star bond. Uh, you do save about 10% on the star bond if you buy it in the bundles and all that stuff. And I'll be putting Chromacraft on the same page here in the future. That's looking crazy when I see all the blue on there. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get back to what we're up to. Um, so I am working today with the Easy Wood Tools Micro Tools. And right now I have everything set up for resin, so I'm going to convert these over to the standard cutters. I, got, I brought in fresh cutters. Uh, so I'm going to change these cutters out. Because uh, these have all been on here for a while. I actually got, a, I got ahead of myself. I, I know I say that I'll get myself in trouble. And I found my ranch and I got all the fresh cutters. And I figured I'd uh, change the cutters while we were kind of waiting for folks to, to drop in here. And if there's any kind of questions that people already have ahead of time about doing miniatures, just fire away. And I'm going to change these out. And I got another cool concept for you today, too. I uh, got a special black background to go underneath the piece. So that should be interesting. It's a wonderful day down in here in Georgia. We've been enjoying uh, fantastic weather for the last week or so. You know how I always grumble about the heat and all. It's finally cooled off and doing pretty good. And actually, I'm going to bring my little table over here to do these. And I'm going to reuse the screws just so you don't have to watch me tear a hole in the bag. Corey's in here, it looks like. Um, been enjoying the, hope you've been enjoying the new membership group, the Spirocraft Wood and Resin Turning Community Group. Uh, Art Miller, who you see here, is also a, uh, a host. Uh, a moderator, that's the right term, I believe, Art. And Art's giving me a hand. I really appreciate it. Everybody give Art a big hand for helping Spirocraft out. Keep an eye on the new group page. That's, uh, it's a big plus for me to have the extra help. Because as most of you know, I am a one-man band around here. Um, I'm assuming all the sound is coming through and, and nothing looks crazy on the screen because nobody's hollering at me about anything. So when I clean out, or when I change these cutters, um, you didn't see me do it earlier, but I always take uh, my ice pick and I go into the Allen head of the screw right there and always clean that out. Now they come with fresh screws, but I'll, you want to clean that out so that you don't strip it uh, if it's really stiff or tight. And also you don't want to tear up your little teeny uh, 16th Allen wrench. Now, one of the benefits, if you get your cutters from Spirocraft, I always include an extra wrench because I always lose the guys. So that's pretty cool. And always use the short end um, of the handle to put them back on. And what am I at here? I'm after square. Still waiting to hear from uh, the woodworking shows. Trying to find out what's going on. Uh, NASA was supposed to come out last week. I'm going to get a hold of them, try and get a hold of them today and see what we're doing for the woodworking shows. Uh, it's time we get that all planned out. I think, I think they've got some interesting plans in order, so we'll see how that all shakes. Another thing about changing these cutters, I'm changing topic on you. If you're going to be turning wet wood, put a little uh, grease or wax on that screw. So the screw doesn't rust in. Okay. And this is the CI7 that's in here. And I have the negative rake in here at the moment. I'm going to change it out. And we're keeping all these for when we get the resin. Now, if Doug is still in here, he'll probably slap me on the wrist. But one thing I want to show you for doing these little teeny miniatures, they're so small, um, without making a special tool, um, yeah, Dad, I mean, hold on the short end, tighten it with the, the, uh, the long end going down. On these tools, it is, and the, the, the uh, detailer is the one I'm going to use the most today. Okay? And I've got one that I stuck in a chuck one time. Don't do that. But to get into these little teeny cups, now, this voids the warranty. Okay? I can assure you, Doug will tell you, this voids the warranty. But you can see that I have ground some of this away to give me a little more relief. Uh, I didn't take a lot away, but I gave myself a little bit of extra room on the tool. 
not too much. And if it gets in my way, I'll take a little more off. I, I don't tell you you need to, but if, if one thing that gets in the way is the bottom of the tool, when you get into a, a, you know, a, a cone that's no bigger than, say, my little finger, and you're trying to go inside of that, you need a little extra relief. And I'm going to show you how to cut above center with it, but that is one thing that I do. And I know the boys at Easywood there, Mr. Doug, um, they always give me lectures for the, some of those kind of things that I do. But it's just what you got to do. It just voids the warranty. So if you bend it up after you do that, don't call them. Don't call me. I didn't tell you that. You didn't hear it here. Mr. Jordan's in here. Good morning. Good to see you. All right. See, to clarify to my dad, when I take the screw out, and he, I mean, to clarify to anybody else, when I take the screw out, I, have, I take it out with the most leverage from the long end. When I put it back in, I make sure and change it around so the long end is there and I'm just using the short end for my leverage. And I'd like to go ahead and stick it in the, the tool. Let's see if I can do this overhead for you without dropping it. And give her a quick spin. Make sure that the cutter is set in nice and flat like it's supposed to be. Snug her up and you're good to go. You're all set. All right, cool beans. So I've got my three tools converted over to standard cutters now uh, instead of the negative rake. Again, I've got this box of goofy stuff back here. You know, who knows? Um, these are way big. Like I say, they were free. I was gonna use uh, some of my green ones stuff and I realized after last week I forgot about how when I use green resin it disappears the chroma key kicks back through this is uh, looks like the Choya cactus stuff uh, so who knows if we'll get to the resin or not but if I do I'll switch the cutters back over okay so first thing we want to do is we're going to get this trued up it um, it is running a little out of true and I'm going to leave that there because of that but not bad from the front camera, you can't really see it, but when I switch it to the overhead, Doug says, that's a good idea, Doug. Uh, buy two and, and modify one. I do run two tools for most of my others in the midsize. Uh, I have one of each so that I can change it around without having to change cutters. So you see we're a little out of true here. Uh, not a ton, but just a little bit. So we'll true that up with the square cutter. Now, another thing that I did for today and we'll play with this. I have underneath here, if you can see my hand, and I know you can't, I'm just watching the delay. Um, I brought in a, a black board to try and give you that profile, because if I take it away, you'll see the shiny, and it's, it's harder to see the profile of the piece. So I brought this, I just took a piece of, uh, it's a piece of shelving from the, the, the displays, and I took steel wool and, 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 sh and took it down to matte so that it wouldn't be shiny. And that way you'll be able to see the profile. And I also put a fresh coat of paint on the tool rest, the banjo and all, because it was getting kind of beat up. I'm going to paint the headstock real soon. So now I'm looking for the center axis. I want to set these tools at the center axis. And these little things are fun. When, I, when these tools first came out, um, it, I did an entire series out at the woodworking shows doing miniatures. And I've had a ball with these little tools ever since. Uh, wood and in resin, uh, all your little blocks of resin scraps that are left over from something else. These are great to make projects out of. Okay, so let's see here. I think I'm going to leave you in the overhead. Doug says sales, guys, just buy two. Absolutely. <laughs> Doug is the quintessential salesman, and Doug comes out to the woodworking shows and helps us out, Spirecraft. And he thinks I'm crazy. Sometimes he wonders how I do what I do out there. Uh, but I have a good time. One of these days, I know we'll get back out there live. We'll see how it goes. I'm just putting on my mask. Ready to roll. Got my usual, uh, what do they call me? They used to call me, sort of some name, I can't always forget now. Jason. I got on my Jason mask. And I believe I can just let that sit like that. That should give you a good 
look so we'll take the square cutter and we're just going to true this piece up just so it's running nice and true oh I, the other thing i was going to tell you as i changed i finally changed the exposure on this camera um, and it's looking a little bit better so we'll see how it goes now this is going to end up really teeny and, and matter of fact this wood is from the woodworking shows when I was doing these projects out there. And you can see I use the front of the cutter or I can use the side of the cutter. Okay. And the very end, um, I'm going to clean this up. I might even cut some of it off. If I don't like the vibration, I'll definitely cut some of this off. Let me go to the end camera. We'll see how that's looking for you. amazing when you change cutters and have nice fresh cutters on people always ask how do you know when to change a cutter the answer is when it doesn't cut like it used to now I'm gonna stop for a second and adjust this camera just to fuzz it'll wiggle a little bit try and get that back in the center of the frame for you there we go okay try and keep this clean Keep that underneath. So I'm gonna start by making my cone, start to shape my cone, and I'm gonna switch tools. And I'm gonna do a lot of the work with the round style cutter. This is the CI5 cutter that's on here. And I'll use this for a lot of my work. I am gonna double check after I drop my chuck wrench, chuck key. Fumble fingers this morning. That everything's nice and snug. It was a little loose. I guess I had forgotten to tighten that up. Good thing you can't see how much I'm actually tightening it back up. And it might go out a little bit out of true now. Not too bad. That needed, I heard a little vibration in there. So snugging this up now. And letting that crush down should take care of all that. Hey, my mom's in here. So mom and dad, y'all, this personal note, uh, don't mind, it's a family affair. Mom and dad, we gonna, we're going to, and I go with my southern, we're going to do a little virtual Thanksgiving, all right? So get your camera ready down there at the computer stations. We'll be talking to you on Thanksgiving Day from the house here virtually because we aren't traveling, as unfortunately so many people are not traveling. Anyway, uh... CI5, small round cutter. It's going to do a lot of my work with this. Uh, my two main tools will be this and the detail tool with the CI7. Alrighty. And I'm going to work out here on the end. This is a small piece, so what I'm trying to do is keep the board underneath for you so that you can see the profile, and I'll just keep cleaning this off. Now, typically, uh, let's see, you can't see that far. I'm in the overhead. You go to front here. And typically, so here's the center of the, you can see the post right here. Here's the center of the torus. Typically, I like to work in the center third. Um, but this is a little teeny piece, and it's not that much leverage going on with these little teeny cutters. So working out on the end, I'm, I'm not that concerned about things flexing or anything like that. Uh, so this is a, an exception for this kind of work. And that way, I can also show you that profile underneath. So if you wonder why am I working off of the end of the tool rest, that's why. All right, so round cutter. Everything's looking good. And I'm going to leave this as big as I can as I go, and I won't make it smaller until I need to. a pretty good view there today. I'm glad that's working. You can see right in here what's going on. Now granted I do have it a little bit extended but I didn't want to cut this piece of wood back. So what 
what I like to do is I like to define the outer profile of the cup first, working on the out to get the outside profile going. Then I'll go and take out the inside. So I'll start to cut the profile of the cup. And here's the trick. The question is how small a profile can we make this be? So that's about the size of my index finger around. And the whole key here is can we get a tool in uh, to be able to take the inside out. Now we'll be able to get the round tool in for a little while, the round cutter, but then we'll run out of space and we'll have to go to the diamond tool. And the CI7 is long and pointy, it'll get its way in there, but we still run out of room. Now that's why, you know, it's a question of how small do you make it and what can you get away with. And so if we go back to the overhead, you'll see here that I've defined uh, the, the, the angle of my cup. And that's all I'm really looking for. I'm not, I don't want to go any further. I want to leave as much wood back here behind as I can, relatively speaking. And that, this size is probably, so there's my little finger, all right? So that's, that's, I'll use that as my gauge. This one, you know, might be a little bit bigger. I'll take it down a little teeny bit more. I don't want to box myself too far into a corner on live TV. Um, so now let's go to the end. And because I'm going to be on the end here, I'm going to go ahead and stop and I'm going to move my little board out of the way. I am going to bring my tool rest around so I have a little bit of shot at it. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. That looks all right. Okay, so it's crucial um, about the height. I hope I didn't stick my head in the way. Um, so I'm actually a little bit above center starting out, and that's okay. That's what I'm going to do uh, because I need to go above center to get the tool in there. The reason being is that I haven't ground this one away. I haven't modified this tool. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. So I haven't ground any of this away, Doug. This one is still... Uh, under warranty. I haven't modified this one. But you can see it doesn't take much to uh, use up this cutter. I'll try and keep my fingers out of the way. This stuff is so fun making these little guys. So what, what happens at this point already the tool stops cutting because the bottom of the tool right here is rubbing on the bottom side of the of your cut of your piece and that's why I went ahead and went up above center with the tool all right and you can only go so far and you can ask Doug there I've been campaigning for the next size uh, like say this screw head size take the cutter away and make that screw head the size of a cutter uh, I know that's that's asking you know probably something beyond the realm uh, but it would sure be great if we could have the the ultra micros one day uh, from Easy Wood Tools. No pressure, Doug. No pressure, though. So that's about all I can really do with this tool now. Is it? I mean, I'm poking and it just won't cut. Okay, not much left, and I don't want to overcut my wall thickness. So it's time to switch to the detail tool. Now I do. I'm going to back up my tool rest just a fuzz because this angle and where I've grounded away overhangs. So I want to back up just a little bit. Now this tool, it's got this, it's, it's really pointy. And so give me, I'll give you a comparison here. That's the standard CI4 on the right, the standard detail cutter. I get the light on both of these the same, maybe it'll, it'll show well. Okay, so there's the standard cutter, the CI4 on the right and then the CI7 on the left. You can see there's a dramatic difference in the profile. And the CI7, it lets us reach a whole lot further, uh, but it also, it's easier for it to get a little grabby. So keep that in mind uh, when you're doing this work. All right. And so I'll start working my way down in here. And I'm 
actually a little bit above center with the tool. All right, I'm gonna raise my tool rest up a fuzz more. Not a lot, because it's, it doesn't take much to make a difference between um, working and crashing and burning. Oh, and I just leaned against the, the stop switch. Hadn't done that one in a while. So I'm working my way down in here as far as I can. And I'm also using, uh, I want to explain the side of the cutter here. So not just the tip, but I'm actually cutting the wall in here, the side of the wall. I use uh, my infamous tooth uh, ice pick. I'm, I'm letting the side of the cutter kind of do a, a scrape cut down the side of the wall as I go. All right. We want to get that nice and smooth in there, and we want to just we want to go in there as deep as we can. Now I know the camera angle is is kind of up high a little bit, so you can't see way down in there. But for what we're making, that's not too bad. Um, I'm almost up to the cutter in depth. Not quite. Let's see. I'm to the middle of the diamond. All right, so I'm right there. All, from all, from the very tip. So considering the diameter of the thing, I'm about as deep as I am wide. All right, if we measure, use that to measure, not quite, but close. And I'll see if I can get a little teeny bit more out of it, or not. The beauty of these is you can make these little guys, and it's great tool control practice, um, out of just a small scrap of wood. You don't have to use anything extreme. And if you break one while you're learning, no big deal. I mean, you're going to use like an inch of wood for the whole project. Okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, because this is going to be so fragile, I want to go ahead and do my sanding and my, and my finish in the cup right now before I even do anything more. And I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'll just start with a little bit of 220 here. And let me get that out of the way. I'll put her in reverse just for fun. I'm going to slow it down. And as you can see, even sanding is tough trying to get in there. So I'll sand the inside, the rim, and the very top edge of the outside. But then we're going to come back and turn some of that away. And sometimes it helps to use uh, something to, to uh, put your sandpaper and just sand in there with because it's, it's hard to get your finger in there and the sandpaper. So I just use my little ice pick. And you stick your little finger in there and you can feel it's all nice and smooth. Uh, relatively speaking, we'll stop it and take a quick look. All right, I don't see any horrendous tool marks or anything. I do want to clean off this edge a little bit and get my hand out of the way. Just kind of smooth that edge over the top. And then I'll, I'll come in here with the abrasive paste. And we'll just use that to finish it off. Okay. Let's see. Questions? Nope. Doug says, hmm. I got you thinking, Doug. All right. So I'm going to use uh, the coarse, a coarse abrasive paste. And again, not, no need to spend a long time on this. We're just going to polish this guy up a little bit. I thought about doing some other things with this, like trying to do a little Rustina, Chromacraft Rustina paint uh, for a metal metallic finish. And with the dry times and whatnot, and it being so small, I thought maybe I wouldn't experiment for once live. You guys know I, I, I don't have a problem experimenting live. Yeah, but it might, it might have taken too long. So we're just going to polish that up inside there. And just the very, very top edge is all I'm ready because I'm going to be cutting more. Um, I'm going to cut more of this away right in through here. So from about there down, I'm not worried about it too much. Okay. So I'll switch over to the fine grit. This just goes real quick. Hopefully I didn't stick my head in there in the, in the way. 
a little bit of the fine polish. Because once we got this stem down small and all, we couldn't we couldn't possibly get back. Well, it would be hard. I shouldn't say you couldn't possibly. Never say never. Um, it would be difficult to polish this um, with the thin stem and all. Let's get my paper towel worked down in there. And then we'll speed her up just to kind of finish that, polish that finish. Get her all, all good to go. And you can see the sheen there, got a nice little sheen, not too much work. Real easy to do. Okay, now we'll start heading down the shaft of the piece. So I think I'll take you to the overhead. Let me get the dust out of the way here. Get my board in place so you can see the profile. So you've got a pretty good view there. I'm looking at the monitors. Uh, that looks like it's doing pretty good. Now I'll be sticking my finger in and checking the wall thickness. I'll be using the round cutter now. Oh, and I'm still in reverse. And let's see, off we go. Oh, I'm gonna lower that down just as far as I can come back down to center now. Too, 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 too low. There we go. On a big piece of, um, of something, it's not, it's, I mean, you always want to be at center with these tools. On um, these small, little delicate guys, if, you, if, it's, if you're below center um, and the tool, if it's down, it can go underneath and snap off your little teeny, your, your work. So I'm gonna double check this. Okay, and it looks pretty good. So I'll start, and if what I'm doing is I'm following that profile right on down. That's why I set the profile ahead of time, okay? Let's take a little more extra wood off of here. Don't take it off till you need to. Okay. So I, I like that profile pretty well. I'll take another look at it here, looking overhead, looking at it from the side. And I want to go ahead, I'm, I do this in stages. I want to go ahead and sand this section. I might take a little bit more. I want to go ahead and finish this top outside. I kind of want to finish the cup um, because once I start, again, taking it away, It will get very flexible out here. The end will flex. So I use the finish as a guide as to where I've been. Okay. So we're going to stop real quick and sand this with our 220 in reverse. And this is a nice, it's a quick little process. You don't have to spend a long time on it. Because by putting the wax on, or the wax or the abrasive paste, it, it allows us to have a color change there. So we know where we're working, okay? A little more speed. Now the next thing I'll do is when, once I've got the two uh, grits on here, and finish with that. I'll I'll uh, I'll make a cut. I'll decide where the bottom of this is, and I'll make a little cut, and I'll take away some of that finish, and that'll be where I don't go back up above. Okay. Switch over to the fine grit. I do like to stop the lathe, 
just to put it on so it doesn't go slinging everywhere. And I know that I got the grits on. Close that back up. Looks like it's staying in focus pretty well there on the small end vores. And then just a little bit of clean. And there we go. So I can look at this and I know that I'm about that deep. Um, let me see what I'm looking at here. There we go. You can see just the diamond sticking out. So you can tell that that's how far down my cup goes. It almost goes, it goes just past, slightly past where I'm at. So that's good. Let me switch to back to forward. So I'm going to take some material away back in here. And you can see how it's leaving the finish up above. And I'm going to decide, you know, where that line is. And I know, and I'm probably a little bit up. That's, that's not too bad. So I'm just a fuzz above where the bottom of the cup is. So that's okay. So I don't want to go above this mark anymore where where you see the the color so that's the beauty of, of putting the finish on and then cutting the wood away now i do have to blend this in a little bit i've got a little bit of a hump right there at the moment and we'll take care of that uh we'll sand that out uh as we go but we don't want to go up past here if we can help it we certainly don't want to come up on here as we keep going okay now actually you need to take some more uh quantity of wood away. i'm going to switch back over to the square cutter real quick because I'm going to need some room to work at the different angles, okay, to cut my captive ring. So we'll just take this off of here real quick, put a little angle to it, might help us, and this is just kind of generally roughing this out. this in stages. I won't take it away until I need to. But this is going this is going to be the start of where we're going to build our captive ring and we'll get that worked out. Switch over to my round cutter now. Oop, get back up there, board. So on the back side of what will be my ring, I start to cut this away. And this will probably this will be end up being my base, this section right in here. Our, remember the ring is going to slide up and down. So we just need some place to, to cut it from and not, not get in our own way. And I'm going to use just the same three tools that I've been using right along here to do this. Which is the beauty, you can do all this whole project with three tools, you don't need a special captive ring cutter uh, to do this. So the, at this point, that would be a huge, giant big captive ring. So we're gonna cut that down till we decide. And it's kind of a, you go back and forth a little bit until you decide what size you, how big a diameter you want your ring to be, okay? And it's a combination of what you want your outside diameter to be and how small you think you can get away with um, on the stem and you, that cut, you're cutting underneath. And this will all make sense in just a second. So let's say for sake of discussion, I'm, gonna, I'm making it about the same, maybe the same diameter as the top of the cup, all right? 
So I'll make it a little bit smaller. I'll make it hard on myself today. I haven't done with these in a while. It's a fun challenge to do these. So now I'm going to start working with my detail cutter and start getting an idea of just what I can do here. Okay. And let me switch to the end camera here. You'll see how I'm coming in and I'm, I've got the tool at an angle. And I'm kind of cutting a little bit of the stem, but not a lot. And I'm undercutting the ring. All right. Then I'm going to switch over to the other side here. And this is where this extra wood, this is where the, uh, it, you have to get it out of the way so you can get the right angle. So I need to take a little more wood away back here. So I switch back over to my round tool. Now you have to work left-handed and start to do the same thing. You could actually come in straight if you want to with your first cut. Okay, and we start to determine the, the uh, thickness of our ring. This is how I do it anyway. There's more than one way to go about this. This is just the way I've, I've always kind of done them. You don't want a huge, you know, big clunky ring on a nice little a uh, petite piece like this. And let me get back to the overhead for you there. Lorraine, good morning. We're having miniature fun here today. Tons of miniature fun. So I start to smooth my ring back over again here on the outside so I can get a good look at what it looks like. Get the chips out of there. All right. This is good practice for turning with your other hand. If you have a smaller tool, I didn't grab a smaller one. I mean, I've got a 12-inch tool rest on here. I don't need all this tool rest. A nice short little 4-inch would be all you really need uh, to do this. But because these tools are, are so small in the shaft here, you do want to make sure you've got it sitting flat so it doesn't rock. Because I've actually got the tool kind of extended. I'm in way back here where my thumbnail is. If you can see my thumbnail there. Okay, and then we'll come back around to the front side. Now I don't want to cut this all the way through. All right, I want to stop and make sure that I've got, I'm cutting underneath, so I'm, I'm happy with that. If I take you to the front, you can see that I've got my undercut going nicely. All right. And I don't have a back camera to show you from back here, but the same thing. So now I have to decide, you know, is this ring, uh, proportion wise, is it a little too big? It looks a little, a little clunky. So I think I'm going to cut its thickness down a little bit more. And we do all this before we, before we commit to it. Now, if you sneeze, you'll break these, you know, you'll mess these things up. So let's get this down to where it's nice and, and delicate. We'll round this back over again. And you can push this to whatever extreme you want to, okay? Now that I've squared it, I'll round the corners over again. Okay. Now, the next step is to add a bit of CA glue to it. We're going to add CA glue to the ring uh, to give it strength before we cut it away. 
So I'm just going to, and before we sand it, I'm just going to saturate this. Hopefully this bottle will run for me this morning and it doesn't want to. So this is why I live with an ice pick. And this is, um, this is thin. So we're just, all we're doing is strengthening up this wood. Okay, we're just going to let it saturate the fibers. Because these rings are very fragile, right? So we're going to let that soak in. And we'll hit it with a little accelerator here in a second. But first we want to let that soak in a little bit. Before we uh, go to the next stage and hit it with the accelerator. Anybody have any kind of questions while we're letting that dry for just a second before I zap it? Because after we uh, accelerate it and it's dry, then we'll sand the ring before we cut it loose. Okay? That should take care of that. We'll give her a spin. Make sure it's dry, put her into reverse. And now we'll go ahead and sand our ring. So we're gonna sand the ring real quick and then we'll finish the ring as well. We'll put our, do our brace of paste and we'll put our finish on it. Now I'm gonna undercut a little bit more before I do that. It's, you know, it's real hard to sand inside the bottom of the ring. Um, I mean, if you can, if you wanna try and get in there. For the most part, we're just worried about the outside. Okay. All right, so I want to undercut just a little bit more. Especially on the back side, the front side. The front side, it seems, you know, it's pretty, pretty well undercut. I'll do a little teeny bit more. Oops, still in reverse, Brad. Because we want our, our paste to get under there. The paste, the brush of paste has a little bit of wax in it. Um, So it'll look, you know, it'll look finished. Get in the overhead there for you. So you want to be careful that you don't touch on two sides. So you see how my cutter is going right up in there and it's real close right here. I might want to go ahead and just take a little bit of that away. The reason being, if you inadvertently touch here while you're cutting there and it makes the tool jump, then you run the risk of breaking your little ring. And I think I'm about to sneeze. So, <coughs> sure enough, hopefully that, there's only one sneeze in there. I managed to get the microphone covered in time, I think. Okay. Back up in here a little bit more. I was interrupted by a sneeze. Okay, a little bit more cutting on the front. Hopefully I don't I don't cut through it before I put the wax the brace and paste on. Okay. Good deal. We're gonna stop right there. Clean that off so you can see that profile. Fresh paper towel for the paste. I love these things. These things are a ball. And we don't care if we get when we get it on the stem because we're going to turn all that away. But we finish our ring before we've cut it loose. Polish that guy up real nice. And just try and reach as far under there as you can. You can always come back and touch it up with a little bit of wax just to change the color after the fact. I'll take off the excess 
standard and we'll go with the fine. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I think we'll have time to, to get into a, a resin one too today. Because it's still only about 10 till, 5 till. I think we'll get two of these done. We'll, we'll get into a second one anyway. That'll be fun. The resin is a little different to, you know, and you turn it and always change the cutters, but it acts a little bit differently as well. And I can even take my ice pick, you know, my, I, my ice pick is one of my number one tools. And I'm gonna work up underneath there with my ice pick on the back side of that ring. Okay, before I cut it loose. Just to show you here on the front end, I just got, I've got the, the abrasive grits on the paper towel and on the wood already. I just let the point of the ice pick go up in there so we get as far back around the corner as we can with it. And we'll polish that up. Good morning, Joe. Oh, uh, late, better late than never. There's always replays, but I'm great, uh, grateful and glad you jumped in here today. We're about two thirds of the way through our wooden miniature goblet with a captive ring, and then I was just talking about how I'm gonna try and work in a resin one after this. It's because I'm having so much fun. Stop, go back to forward. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut some more of the stem away, which will give me more room uh, to make my final cuts on the captive ring. Not a lot, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this off. I can only do so much. Because I don't wanna cut my ring. I went through all that trouble to polish it, so I don't wanna hit it with a cutter. Okay, all right, so that's about all I can do. Um, I'll leave it on the end camera for a second so you can see as I come in from the front here. Air to the outside of the ring and there she goes. So that's all it took to get that loose. That's how close we were to it being all the way through. So now the ring is free, it's been released, and we can continue on. This guy will hang out wherever you, usually, usually it'll be it'll cooperate and try and go up the hill for you. Now this guy's so teeny, I'm gonna take the mask off. So now as I'm getting down to the details, to blend this in remember where my line is up here on the top that I don't want to go past that line as I taper this down and at this point it's whatever your comfort or ego and pride factor is for how small do you want to make that stem in there all right whatever you think you can get away with without breaking it depends on the strength of your wood this ash is pretty strong it's always fun to see just what you can do and keep your cutter cleared off like I did there so that you can really see what you're doing however far you want to go and also you know what what looks nice um, you know that's that's headed for respectable it's got a nice little waist to it not too bad at all I'll take the classic one more pass a little bit more out of there and I want to change this profile up here just a fuzz I'm looking down at it Thank you. 
Now the next thing I also need to do, I'm going to take my little detail cutter and I'm going to decide where's my base, where's my bottom of this. All right? Because I need to know where to work to. So let's say that's how long we're going to make the overall piece. Somewhere right in there. Let's see how the, I want to watch that cut. Okay, that looks good. All right, good deal. So, knowing that, I'm going to come in here with my square cutter. Just get some of that out of the way. And then you can make your base any way you want. That's the beauty of wood turning. It's all up to you. I just want to get this defined. And then we're going to sand this and polish it. So we don't want to make that so small right in here. We don't, we don't want this to be so small underneath the base uh, that it's going to flex when we, when we do our, our polishing on it, okay? So we'll just clean this up a little bit more. It's amazing, you know, when the piece gets, when they get this small, uh, you know, just fractions, thousandths of an inch make a difference in the profile. And that's what's fun about it. it, it it's so much different than turning a bowl. It makes the bowl feel like a big old clunky uh, something once you, you start making these little teeny guys. When your stem is down to the thickness of one bad cut on a bowl. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's got a decent look to it. So let's run through the polishes real quick. Well, thank you, Corey. It's a, it is an awesome little goblet, and these things are so much fun. And again, we've literally used an inch and a half, maybe two inches of wood uh, off of something, whatever it might be. So it doesn't take a lot of wood. It's great for your uh, tool control, your, your hand-eye coordination with your tools. Uh, I can't think of much of anything better that would help you. I should have sanded that dummy. I don't know what I was doing. Talking too much. Need to sand that first. I'll gum up some paper, but hey. Oh well. Um, it's great for your eye hand coordination to make these little teeny pieces. Again, this is just 220. I'm just doing this quick like. The tools are cutting it nice and smooth. We're not really having any tool marks or anything. Uh, again, I started with nice, fresh, sharp cutters. The reason being, uh, you could, do, if you were using a cutter that's a little bit more dull, duller, you might have to push a little harder. And if you made that stem really small, and you know, excessive force, you run the risk of breaking things. Same thing with when I was cutting the ring. So start with a nice, fresh set of cutters on all your tools for this, so that you don't have to worry about um, extra pushing or anything of that nature. Okay, that looks pretty good. And the other thing you can do while you're here, you can drop in here and sand the very edge of that bottom. Okay, because you won't be able to sand this thing very easily once you're done with it. Okay, now back to my paste. I put the cart in front of the mule there. And the ring just kind of rides around. Yeah, it gets a little more paste on it again. You just wipe it all off eventually. And clean section of towel. Take off the, the coarse grit. I'm looking forward to trying to do another one in resin here in the second, second hour uh, that we have. That'll be fun. Again, great practice for your eye-hand coordination with the tools as you, especially if you're, if you're beginning learning to turn, it will come into play, it will help you in your bigger work as your pieces get bigger. Uh, it's, it's a good thing. It really helps that eye-hand coordination. On those, when you're trying to make a light cut on a big piece and make it nice and smooth, 
This is where you help develop those kind of skill sets. And we'll polish this up at a little bit higher speed. You can get crazy. You could you could take your little if you have a texturing tool, one of the Sorby texturing tools or anything of that, the spiralers. Um, you could do all kinds of fun things with the minis to these. Uh, if if you have that kind of stuff, it's the sky's the limit on what you do with these. I'm just keeping it simple today. Just making showing you the basic forms. All right, let's go ahead and finish this guy off. We do have to put it in forward. I'll cut the excess away back here. We do want to make sure that it is undercut so that it will stand flat. It doesn't, it won't teeter. And that broke the bottom out of it. That's so unfortunate. Ah, it makes me mad. But maybe we can still save this. It's going to maybe have a teeny, teeny base. Again, as you can see, you have to be careful. I broke the fool out of it. <laughs> I don't think there's a whole lot. Well, we'll see what we can do here. Um, this little pointy tool is, and what happened was this edge, the second edge, caught on the, on the base. And boom, right? So we live and we learn. Things like this happen. But we're not, it's not we're not out of we're not out of the game right it might have a different shape to it now but i'm not going to give up on this guy good golly no we'll just make it a real long stem goblet we'll get her cleaned up don't let a little thing like that deter you okay I hear a little tick in there still. So I've still got a little, I've got a couple little chunks of tear out right in there, chunks where it tore out. So I'm going to have to make that stem a little bit smaller, which will make it a little more challenging. But that's okay. These things happen. It's all part of the pro process and program. So I'm going very gently because I got those divots in there and you can hear them touch, click, click, click. Now, at some point you could stop and try and sand them out, but hey, what fun is that? So right in here, you can see we still have this chunk right in here. So let's see, we've, I mean, we've already made our first error. So let's go ahead and see if we can't We'll just take her down. We'll either we'll either make it super thin or we'll break it again all the way. Even if I broke this piece, I would still consider it a success in the practice. It just wouldn't be a complete success. We do want, so one thing I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to continue this taper from up in the top here all the way down through here. All right, and I've got a little chip right in there still. Now this is where I was talking earlier, if the tool gets underneath the center of this, um, it will snap it. So I'm actually going to raise that tool rest up just a fuzz. Let's see if we've got that out of there now. Okay, got a little lump there though, but the, the divots are gone. Okay, so I just need to fix this up. Right in here, it's got a little lump to it. Of 
course, it's kind of fun trying to work with the ring bouncing around on you, too. Again, you could sand that, but it. go ahead and try it with the tool. I mean, you've already come this far, and you can see there's plenty of flex up here now. So the police flex is pretty good. All right. So. We'll give her a little sand. We'll go in reverse. Now I'm to get my tool rest out of the way for a second. And I'm going to support this with my finger just a little bit as I sand this. If I don't mess it up from this point out, I'm going to say that I, that was a nice recovery. And that's the beauty of, of wood turning as a hobby, you know? Nobody knows what you started with and what if it doesn't come out the way you first planned, but you make it into something else that's cool. Well, that's all good. The whole idea is to enjoy yourself and have fun. All right. I mean, if somebody hired you to make something to a certain specific specification and you mess it up, okay, well, that might be a different story. Um, but if you're just working for yourself and having a good time, well, it's no thing. I, want, I do want to define my bottom. I want to clean this up before I sand this. So that'll be our base this time. We'll try again not to break it when we come around to finish it up. All right. All right. Back to reverse. Quick sand on that edge of the base now. So I lost, cut into my time of my other piece, but hey, you get that sometimes. And we'll go fast here. Keep one finger, like I said, I got my thumb up there, just kind of help support it. Okay, I think, I think if I don't, if I'm not speaking too soon, I think we'll survive. Now, unfortunately, the one thing that I would say, and it's not the end of the world, my ring, because I ended up making the stem so thin, that my ring is a little big from pr proportionally for the piece, but, you know, there you are. That's what you got, that's what you got. And a little bit of fine abrasive real quick. My thumb up in there, polish her up, make her look pretty. It's, it's fantastic practice and just tons of fun, tons of fun. Okay, now let's see if we can do this again and not mess it up, Bradley. So square cutter to get some extra material out of the way. I can even come in here with the round cutter if I want. See, once bitten, twice shy, right? Now that's where I got in trouble before. I let that left hand edge, I let this edge right here touch the bottom and that's what, what uh, broke it, caught it and broke it. So I'm going to be more careful this time and not do that. <sighs> keep that nice and clear so you can see. So we make sure we keep her undercut. Make sure we don't touch anything here. We cut that away if it's in our way. Keep her nice and undercut. And it's amazing what you can get this down to. I don't know if you can see. Let's see how, how small that's looking. There, yeah, you can see that's right down there to just about next to nothing. Got a little line under there, so we'll clean that up.
That's still hanging on. I mean, that's, I don't know how big that is. That's a, that's paperclip thin, maybe even thinner. That's amazing how strong that piece of wood is. And off we go. Ba-boom. So we saved it. We were able to save it. We didn't totally destroy it. Uh, so I don't know if it'll sit up here and you'll be able to see it or not. Set it on, I can set it on here. Let's see if that shows up in the end camera. It doesn't show up in the end camera, but I'll make it show up in the end camera. I can get. It. I think the fan is blowing it over. Maybe I'll set it right. That didn't work. Um, there you can see it. Uh, put it up against the gray, or if I hold my black board up here behind it, it helps. I know it's a little far away on the front camera. But that's pretty cool. Uh, let me go to the end camera and see if I can set it on the board and get it where we can see it. Gives you an idea. The bottom, the very bottom there has got a little bit of sand that needs to be done. But all in all, pretty cool. And if I lay it down like that and, oh, and put it back in the overhead. Fun little piece, all right? Nice thin stem, thinner than I planned, but hey, you get that, and it worked out well. So, I mean, I'm pleased with that. I'm happy. I think this one will probably be going to Miss Bridget in the house. I know she loves these little guys when I make them. So, well, thank you, gang. Um, let's play with a little bit of resin. I got to change cutters, and I'm just going to set this so right over here. Um, that was fun. So, I think... Uh, I'm actually happy that, that I had that little error and kind of broke, you know, it, it broke or got damaged so that I could show you the recovery process, how you can recover uh, when you have an incident um, and it's not the end of the world and it's not necessarily the end of the piece, okay? So I think that's really important. And the tools, you know, allowed me to do that with a nice, easy, light touch. Again, I had, I had described what could happen with uh, the side touching too much on the tool, and indeed it did. And that's exactly what happened to me there. All right. Uh, quick change of cutters. And we'll switch over to the negative rakes, and then we'll find a piece of resin, and we'll go from there. Yes, so, so Corey, um, now that you like the challenge and you're going to make one, this is what the Monday Methods, the wood, uh, Spider Craft wood, wood and Resin Turning Community Monday Methods group is about. Uh, this week we're going to meet on Wednesday night, and we're going to talk about, so if this, is, this inspired you to go try something, uh, we want to talk about it on Wednesday night. Uh, this week, last week was Friday. Um, Come in, go give it a try, and if you're not a member of the group, uh, by chance, please uh, go find the Spirecraft group. Go to uh, Facebook and look for the Spirecraft group, Wood and Resin Turning Community, and ask to join, and we'll let you right in. And, and then, you know, make, your, make it. Make a piece, make one of these, and join in the discussion on Wednesday night. Bring your piece, and, um, and we'll talk about it. And that's what I encourage everybody to do. That's what the group is about. It's about... Uh, what we play with here on Monday Methods and then getting together after the fact and discussing it. You know, what worked, what didn't work, uh, what you might try different, whatever comes to mind. And I would love for you guys to, when you get inspired here on Monday Methods and you make a piece and you remember the group, post the pictures. Post the pictures in the group. You can actually start your own album there in the group um, to show us your work. So that's what that group is all about. It's it's not really uh, it's not, I mean it's a private group. It's not a public group, and not because I'm trying we're trying to be snobbish, but it really is intended to relate to this Monday Methods uh, demonstration program. Not get off on all kinds of crazy tangents about things that we haven't talked about here. That's why I, we have it after the fact, and then we can talk about possibly what is planned for next week, if yours truly has got a plan by then. 
Uh, so, so please do. And I encourage everybody else that's here today or that sees this video after the fact to try making yourself a little teeny uh, captive ring stem goblets. Again, Spivercraft has the Easywood tools, all the little miniature cutters and the uh, tools and the cutters are all on sale at 15% off. Um, if you missed it, I'll show it again at the end. Um, it's in the beginning of the video. If you go to the Spirocraft page, spirocraft.com on the internet, and then click on events, you can read about it, and that'll take you over to the store. Let me get my... I'm going to put a fresh... Because uh, I know I'm going to use the, the round CI-5 the most. So I'm going to put a fresh CI-5 on uh, for this resin work. Let's get us the fresh one on there. Do, 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 do. That was fun. That was a fun little piece. And again, the, the challenge of fixing, you know, a mistake or an error um, just just adds to it. It it makes you better. It really does. It makes you a better turner because you have to uh, compensate, overcome all that kind of thing, get creative. Okay, I think we're looking good on all our cutters now. Let's see. I'm going to go over here to this box. I'll pull it up here and see what we've got. I, I honestly, I've never really sorted through this. I, I, a fella dropped it off one day. And uh, I don't want anything too big because I want to make something small. I don't know if there's anything the size of a pen blank already in here. And there's not. Everything's pretty big. Because I don't want to spend a long time making it, getting it down to size. Um, so hang on a second. I'm not seeing anything I like there. Um, change these cameras. I'm going to walk around to my infamous drawer that you all know so well. Or you, well, you don't know it, but you hear me rumbling in it all the time. I used to have... Yeah, and here it is. So this is a piece of resin that I got from Zach Higgins. Uh, Zach is my, here we are in overhead. It, Zach is my resin turning mentor. And this is probably a Lumalite um, with purple, purple uh, long strand glitter in it. Oh, I'm, on, I'm not on the overhead, sorry. So I got this from Zach. So I think let's go ahead and try and make another one of these. We'll, we'll, we'll chuck right along um, out of that. Now I do need to change jaws. So let me jump over here and change out my jaws. Beauty of the easy wood chuck. Quick change jaws. See how shiny that chuck is now? Nothing four out steel wool won't fix. Doug will tell you that uh, I use their tools, their chucks and their tools. I use them hard, and I've been using them for years. I've had that chuck for a long time. I've had all these tools for a long time from Easy Wood. When I'm out on the road with the woodworking shows, these things are fantastic. I, oh, no, that's a set of jaws that I spilled resin on. That's my bad. But I happen to have another one over here. I don't know how I got resin on a chuck jaw. Uh, using these tools out on the road, it keeps my, my tool. I don't have to carry a bunch of different chucks. This is the one I got resin in the other day. I think I got it in both of these. Okay. That's the little zoom ring there. Gets us close. We'll have to check the cameras because this is a little bit different length and all. We'll see how this looks. So I might just move the headstock. It's easier than moving the cameras. See if we can make that turn any truer. Uh, it's it's not perfectly true. We'll make it round. I'll have to let Zach know that I, 
I turned a goblet out of the end of this. Now, I don't know how this is going to flex. Uh, this is the first time I've made a goblet. Abuse. Abuse, Doug. I'm a product tester. <laughs> I can be, I guess you could call it abuse a little bit sometimes. Um, abusive. I'm hard on them. I put them through rigorous testing for easy wood tools. Uh, let's see how this, how this turns. Again, I don't know if it's going to flex a bunch, and it is. I can see that because the resin is, is pretty flexible. So, well, we'll see what happens here. We'll just have to see what happens. Do 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 do. Um, I could bring the tailstock up. It's going to kind of get in the way of everything. Let me adjust this. I'm going to move the headstock so that the cameras will be able to see it a little bit better. There we go. It's easier to move the headstock than it is to change the cameras. And I actually am going to try. I'm going to bring tailstock up. And see if I can't stabilize this for a little bit. Because we can always uh, make our make our cone and then turn the inside lightly. Can you imagine putting a steady rest on a five inch piece of resin? But it would do it. It would help you out. It'd be kind of in the way, but it would help. Okay. So that takes care of that. Now, I'm sure you pen turners, you have great ideas here, but since I don't turn pens, um, beats me. So again, I've switched everything over to the negative rake cutters. And this is the radius negative rake because I, I haven't gotten dug there to make a square negative rake cutter yet for the easy wood tools, but I keep pushing them. For roughing, you don't need the radius one. And the reason I say that, Mr. Doug, is that I'm taking my finished cutter and I'm using it for roughing work. So if I had a square negative rake roughing tool, I could sure save my finished cutters. That's called applying pressure to the manufacturer. I'll probably get a phone call this afternoon. That's all right, Doug and I need to chat anyway about the upcoming uh, woodworking show season. Okay. Is that round? So not quite round. You'll see that uh, shiny spot there. It means I don't have this quite round yet. we do okay first moves again to cut the cone cut the cone shape and I think I'll switch it to the end we'll see how, what that looks like for you it might be better in the overhead resin leaves the strings the strands it's a little bit harder to see what's going on until we clean them off Resin has a lot more flex to it, so it, it is a little bit different animal, um, depending on the wood. I don't know that I could get resin down to that stem that we just made uh, in this. <laughs> tough, I could take it. I know you're tough, Doug. So same principle again. This is the way I've done goblets, whether they're the size of my little finger or if they're full size uh, drinkable, drinkable goblets. It's just the way I've always made goblets. All right. Now the tricky part a little bit. See if we can't hollow this cone out without having too much flex and vibration. Get you on the end camera there. Look 
to rest this little fuzz low. Pop that guy up there. Still a little teeny bit low. All right, there we go. Do 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 do. Let's see what happens here. This will be fun because this is, you know, clear. It almost looks like epoxy because it's got a little amber to it. So I'm already hitting the bottom of the, the tool. So I'm going to raise that tool rest up just a fuzz. See if I can't get a little bit more out of it. So I'm just a little bit above center. And then I'll switch over to the CI7 negative rake. All right. Switching over. Backing up the tool wrist just a fuzz. Because of the overhang of the tool, of the cutter itself. So you can see there's a lot of flex in the resin there. So it's it's uh, it's fun to try and be gentle and hurry. And so I'm looking at the time. Let's see, it's 12:28. Got a half an hour. But if you take if you take your time, or at least if you're gentle. And, and don't try and get too ambitious too quick. And also in the overhead, um, if you can see the white cone forming on the inside there. So watch the tool as the tool goes in. You can see, so you can actually see your wall thickness and see how far you've cut. And the, the thinner I make the wall out here, the further I can reach the tool inside. I need to put my blackboard back up there. I don't even know what I did with it now. What did I do with that? That's, I've lost my mind. There it is. Let's see if we can stick this up here and have it not fall down. One could say that's right handy to be able to see what you're doing on the inside from the outside. I would certainly say so. And clean up this tip here, the end. There was some markings on there. Roll that shoulder over so that's nice and smooth. Okay, so there's, because it's flexing, we're getting a little bit of uh, uh, chatter on the inside. Uh, yep, Doug, we'll talk soon. Thanks for dropping in. Appreciate it every time you come by and visit us, Doug. Hopefully I didn't get, well, I'm, in the, am I, I'm in the overhead. Okay, so my head's not in the way. Because I'm looking down inside of here pretty good. about as far as we were uh, before. This one doesn't have the emblem on it. So that's about the same. So real quick like, I'm just going to come in here and sand that. There goes my board. 
and we'll move through the process again. Uh, I'll move kind of kind of quickly on this. And we put you in the over the end camera there. You can see what we've got going there now. Into reverse. Again, I'm not going to spend any kind of inordinate time in here sanding. Just because of time, but you get the idea. Again, my favorite ice pick comes into play. All right. That'll have to do, just because of the clock. I think this is the first translucent or clear little micro resin goblet. I think it's the first little resin goblet I've made. I've made other little little things um, and goblet-like structured parts of a piece that are like a goblet, but never a miniature goblet in and of itself out of resin. And I should have sanded the outside of this too while I was at it. Again, I'm not going to try and make it anything uh, super, super, super fine and smooth. Jump you to the overhead there real quick. I do love working with resin. I started working with resin a couple of years ago. I've been having a ball. I find all kinds of fun things to make. And now, oh, ow, that was hot. A little f friction, heat friction there. Um, switch over to the fine paste. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Again, I'll take you back over to the end. You can see what's going on. See what that's looking like. Could actually use just a fuzz more sand right up here on the Right up in here, there's a little, it's a little, probably this vibration made it chatter. I don't know if we'll get that off with the micro or not, but. As I often say, you get the idea. Right. And now we'll go back and, and attack the outside. So, uh, I think I have a rubber chucky cone that should actually go in this. And I can support this guy a little bit. If I can remember where I put him. So I want, a, I want one of the urethane cones. I have an aluminum cone, but I'd rather use the urethane. And I know I put them somewhere where I could find them in, back in the tool drawers here. I didn't think about this earlier. There we go. Is this one going to go in there? It almost goes all the way down to the bottom. 
to support that. And let's take a look at the fit of that against the actual cone. I'm not sure what the degree that I made it now. So the, the urethane cone is going to be a better choice. We'll go like so. Ah. Drop the board on the floor. The urethane cone won't mar the finish on this guy. Threads right on to the five center, just like that. And that won't mar the finish. Gives us some support. Life is good. All right, back into forward. Get the tool rest adjusted. With the, uh, it's gonna be fun with the, uh, but I'll try and do it. With the tailstock here, it's, I can't turn the board sideways. But you all understand that. And off we go. Turn that outside on, on the very top. Um, it probably because I flexed it a little bit. But I'm going to try just for fun to see if I can't put a ring on this. because because I like to have fun I like the challenge I need to back my tourist up just a fuzz when I change tool so I start to define the the shape of the ring the parameters for the wall thickness Make a profile. It's kind of different doing when something is clear. Kind of intriguing. And keep and having the strands that are oh, just part of a light falling. Don't mind that noise. <laughs> the studio is falling down. No, I, I had put a light diffuser on the uh, front light, and I guess it fell off. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Same basic process from as before. We won't be using the CA glue to uh, stabilize the resonating. So I'll start to cut. I'm going to move this board just a little bit. Start to undercut. And I'll come to the over end camera for you. I'm just about out of tool rest there. Oh, 
that's hard to see in the clear. First time for everything. So you can shape with the detail tool, you just do it gently. So I'm actually just kind of cutting some of this out of the way. As I'm cutting back behind the ring. I don't I want again, I don't want to cut all the way through. Sorry for my arm there. But we're in the end. So you're watching from there. Sometimes I forget which camera I've got going. I need to sneak this in as close as I can get it. Okay. Let's go ahead and give a quick sand to the ring. Fresh piece of sandpaper. We'll do a quick sand and a quick polish, and we'll keep right on moving. Let me round that over a little bit. Let me fix that profile just a little bit more. You can do better than that. It had a flat spot in it. And it's, it's lopsided. As Bridget tells me all the time, I'm a perfectionist, and I say, no, I'm not. I just want it right. Oh, that's better. Okay, quick little sand. Pop you into the overhead there. Resin will take more sanding than the wood, but today's clock doesn't allow that. So we'll just keep hustling right on along here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. A bit of coarse abrasive paste. It won't make it ultra smooth, but it'll make it clear and Kind of shiny for today's purposes. And I'll take my ice pick and work up underneath the back side of it there as much as I can. Now I'm guessing that what will have to happen is that some kind of little bit of setting will have to take place or polishing of the back side of the ring because when you turn it, when we cut it loose, it's going to be uh, white again. It won't be clear, so we'll have to do a little something in there. Now, this would be a good candidate if you can't get in there to polish it. Um, a coat of lacquer. You can spray a coat of gloss lacquer on resin, and it'll, it looks great. So that would be one, uh, one way to go if you can't get back in the back side of it. All right, that worked pretty well. Let me get the fine on it real quick. Get that out of the way so you can see. Just polish that outside top up. And again, just using the tooth, the tooth, I keep calling toothpick the ice pick to try and reach around the back side of it as much as I can. Okay, and so there's our ring. Now again, we're, we're not even finished turning our stem here. Zoom, 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 zoom. 
And let's go ahead and see if we can't cut this guy free. The forward would be good. Again, I'm turning about a thousand RPMs on this. And let me give you, I don't know which view is going to be better. Give the end view for when I'm coming in on this end anyway. Can stop and clear the, the strands out. There we go. And so now we're free and clear. So we'll go quickly back to shaping our stem. Blending to do right up in here. Let me go to the overhead. So the transition from the original cone down to the, the stem here, we want to blend that up nicely. So I've got some pressure on here. I'm going to actually back this pressure off a little bit and help stop that from flexing. I just want to support it. Let's see, I got a little hump right in there. Keep that clear for you. Come out of there, strands. Having this black uh, board underneath lets me see this real nice so I can see the profile. I'm going to take my detail tool and cut my theoretical point for a base. Somewhere right about there. Gets rid of some excess back there behind me. Looks like the detail tool is just going to be my better job tool of choice for defining this area. Okay, we've got a little smoothing up to do down here. See if we can't get those strands out of there. Oh, so far, sorry if I just put my head in the way. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Clear that off so you can see underneath. Board wants to fall down. All right, we're gonna call that good for that. So I'm going to get this ready to take away. We'll come back and sand this in just a minute. I'll probably come in here with the CI5 round tool. I know I will. Make myself a little more room. There we go. Okay. Get all those guys off of there. You can see what I was talking about on the ring. There's a little bit of the whiteness on the back side um, from when it cut through and it's not shiny anymore. 
All right, our quick, quick, quick sand here. Again, I'm not going to spend as much time, the amount of time that I should. I'm not going to sand this to the degree that it should be sanded just because of the time. But you get the idea. Quick hit of paste. We'll call it shiny paste today, or clear paste. Make it clear. So you can see, once I make that clear inside, the uh, there's a little bit more polishing to do in the very inside of the cone. This still got some whiteness to it. So we'll, we'll try and do that before I part it off, just to see if we can. I don't know if I'll be able to get in there enough, but we'll give it a try. Going to have to send a picture of this to Zach. Say, hey, Zach, we actually made a goblet out of your little piece of cool resin. This is the fine, fine grit. Again, just moving quickly through it. Turn up speed. Always use a paper towel. Don't use any cotton t-shirts or anything for something like this. If it gets caught, it'll wind your finger up in it. That would be fun. I could actually take some dye, and I could dye that ring with my uh, alcohol, Chromacraft alcohol-based aniline dye. I could dye that ring with a paintbrush, and it would be a different color if I don't knock the board on the floor leaning on it. And that might be kind of cool. Again, there's, and there's also a little bit of paste on the back side of the ring right now, so the ring is looking a little bit white. But all in all, pretty neat. So, let's see if we can't get the inside of that polished up just a little teeny bit better. If we can succeed. If not, we're not going to sweat it. Let's see if we can get all the way down in there and get that white to go away. Take my ice pick, force the issue. It's a little bit better. There's still a couple, there's a little tool mark line down in there. If one wanted to, they could spend the time. I could go back in there and sand that out. Um, but I'm not going to today. But you get the idea. So we got a little bit of a haze in there from that this needs to be sanded out. It's pretty small down in there. The other thing I could do, I could take a marker and put a uh, color of that. I could color the ring and color that little uh, piece up section up top, and that would disappear.
and we're on the overhead okay see if we don't we can keep from having a repeat of the first piece on its first attempt we do want this to be undercut And because you need to see, it's, it's important to get those little strands out of there. There we go. So that's right down to a real small little section there now. I'm going to slow her down because she's just about to go through there. You can see it just about ready to snap. There we go. And it'll stand up there. Let's see where can you see that. You can't see that anywhere. Get my mask off. That actually worked. I will hold it in my hand here. And oh, what I, I used the board before, didn't I? And we'll show it to you. It's going to be at a funky angle on the end camera. But there's our little piece. Got this little ring. A little ribbon not stuck on there. Oops, there we go. Light's kind of shining on it, kind of funny. We'll lay it down to see if we can get it to balance there. It wants to roll. Hard to see it on the black because it's clear. It doesn't show up as much. There you go. So that was fun. Uh, one, one in wood, one in resin. Talk more about the waxes. Uh, that's uh, abrasive paste. I happen to be using the Yorkshire grit abrasive paste today. And there's just two grits of it. There's the standard, if you will, and then the microfine. You can use that. You can use, uh, I actually prefer, but I, don't, I didn't bring it over. I didn't think if I was going to get to it or not. The 3M uh, system, the perfected system from 3M, that's what I use on my lacquer. It's a three-stage system. It actually does a better job. It is much more expensive, but it does a great job. But any abrasive paste to polish that finish down, and had I sanded this resin, you know, uh, to whatever nth thousands um, to make it super shiny and all, that would have been great. Again, if you're pen turners, you've got that kind of stuff dialed in. Um, I don't, I typically, in the, my resin pieces, I actually spray them with clear lacquer after the fact that um, I'll sand them and then just spray them with lacquer instead of using the, uh, the grits. I might use the grit to get it down. But that was fun. Let's see here. I'm trying to think of a way. This one has a little nub on the bottom, so I didn't quite get the bottom. Uh, it's got a little nub sticking out. It won't quite stand up on its own. So maybe I'll put it upside down and hold them both up. I don't know if you can see those or not. Look up against my red jacket. They both kind of wiggle a little bit, but that was pretty fun. And if I, if I put them in the overhead now, the overhead I have, I'm trying to see. Nah, you can't see much. It's too close. Um, fun little projects, little teeny goblets with captive rings. Again, kind of far away. I'll walk right over here and see if I can get in front of the camera and hold them up for you. See if it'll focus. This one's on auto. There you go, kind of, sort of. Gives you an idea. And inside the cups. Not too, not too swift at doing things upside down and backwards. Well, gang, I bet you it is one o'clock, 102. So I'm gonna wrap it up with that. Um, I hope you picked up some tips today on making yourself some little miniatures 
uh, miniature goblets working with uh, the easy wood tools again let me grab my little clicker here and see if I can't scroll this page oh I went all the way to something else completely so there we go if uh, if you go to Spirocraft and jump on the events page click on the black Fr the back Friday sale that'll take you let me get over here where I'm safe I can't get it to scroll now. Ah. And it, you actually, the buttons down here will take you to um, the various products in the store. And everything's on sale, 15% off on the EasyWood tools. I'm not going to try and drive this too much more uh, with my little hand clicker. But jump over there. It runs through Wednesday through the 25th. And uh, we'll get you hooked up. So we'll pop back up there. Ah, I dropped it. I do appreciate everybody coming out today. Um, Art, thank you for, as always. Uh, my dad's here. Good job. Dad says thank you. You're welcome, Dad. Uh, Joe, Av, um, wonderful time. I hope you guys had fun. Got to come up with what's for next week on Monday Methods. But Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, I'll be out here um, for the Monday Methods Wooden Resin Turning Community uh live talk it is a google meet style you know zoom style but with google meets so we can sit and chat chit chat you guys go ahead and make up some pieces try some of this do some small ones and bring them to the event and let's talk about it and come up with an idea for next monday so everybody stay safe have a happy thanksgiving of course i'll talk to hopefully a lot of you before then um, if not i'll see you next week appreciate everybody's time and we'll talk to you soon thank you now and i'm going to leave you with that page right there as we say good day.